Hi, I'm Steve Murphy and welcome to the Insider Exclusive. Today, we are featuring some headlines, civil rights news, focusing on the Los Angeles Fire Department and the case of Tenny Pierce. Stay tuned. In the fire department, you don't mess with a person's safety equipment, their family, or their food, and every firefighter knows it. I never heard about any discipline. No one, the department never called me to let me know what was going on, mm -hmm. and I felt that, you know, that they were covering it up. You're looking at a guy with 17 years on who's never been disciplined, who's worked all over the city. There's got to be something that's systemically wrong here. I am very pleased to introduce Jeannie Harrison. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Steve. Tell us the full name of your law firm. It's Lit Estuar Harrison and Kitson. You represented uh, one of your clients, Tenny Pierce, correct? That's correct. Who's going to be on the show today, right. who was a L.A. Fire Department employee that, um, well, tell us the story. He was a veteran firefighter. Um, he was, had about 17 years on. And one day, uh, a white captain uh, for whom he worked uh, bought dog food, and the entire station basically fed it to him in his spaghetti without him knowing. And then once he reported the incident, mm -hmm. he was very severely retaliated against. And mm -hmm. that, was, that was the end of his career, because he, from the fire department's perspective, he crossed the line uh, from the member's perspective once he reported. Well, let me ask you a question because everybody's read this in the newspaper. Initially, there was a settlement amount of, I think, $2.7 million. That's correct. Which was vetoed by the mayor. That's correct. Mayor Viragosa. Um, and one of the reasons it was vetoed, I believe, was some photographs appeared on the Internet. That's which right. Which showed that your client participated in some hazing activities against other firemen, right? Yes, it wasn't actually hazing. People characterize it as hazing. Mm -hmm. um, there is a very different story. What happened for a very long time was that when members, the people you actually liked, were promoting or transferring to a different station or it was their birthday, what would happen is all of the guys would get together. They would pull the individual um, down and strap them onto a gurney or in a chair and then empty the contents of the refrigerator on them. <laughs> Photographs would be taken yeah. and those photos will be shown at the person's retirement party and everybody will laugh and pat them on the back. This has it's been a, a tradition. tradition. There is a very different um, rule yeah. in the fire department. You don't mess with a person's safety equipment, their family or their food and every firefighter knows it. Yes. All the way up to the highest parts of the chain of command. And so it was an incredible, egregious breach of yeah. their internal rules that they fed Mr. Pierce dog food. Um, we are going to bring your client on, Tenny okay. Pierce, so we can tell a little bit about what really happened there. Because I think a lot of people haven't heard his story, have they? A lot have not. They've seen it in the newspaper, they don't understand it, but we're going to bring him on right now. Okay, okay? that sounds great. I am very pleased to have with us today, Tenny Pierce. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You are the person everybody's talking about in Los Angeles. Uh, a firefighter that. who received $1.5 million through the assistance of your attorney and um, was fed <coughs> dog food by some of your fellow firefighters. Mm -hmm. You were a veteran firefighter, 17 years. Yes. There, you know, there's pranks with, you know, other fellow guys, you know, because you're always working together and that sort of thing. But this went beyond the pale, didn't it? Yes, it did. Um, when you talk about an organization such as the fire department, it can be an organization such as NBA, NFL, where guys play pranks, guys, you know, joke around with, with each other. But there has to be a line that you know as a grown profession that you cannot cross. Mm -hmm. And in the fire department, the line was, you don't mess with anyone's family, you don't mess with anyone's food, and you don't mess with uh, personal equipment. Those are lines that you just don't do. Um, what happened to me, we were playing just a game of volleyball, and I was just saying, feed the big dog. You know, just as when we're all out there laughing and joking. So it was really nothing big about it. Little did I know that um, when we 
went back to the station to clean up, um, to go eat lunch, that the captain involved went to the store with another member, um, brought the can of dog food, brought it back to the station, gave it to the member. The member took it in the kitchen. They prepared my dinner that night, which was the dog food. As I walked into the station, not aware of anything, right. one of the guys met me at the door and said, hey, your plate's on, this, on the stove. I trusted this guy because he's, he's a fellow firefighter. Yeah. Just as a kid would trust a father when he says, my plate's on the, your plate's on the stove. Yeah. I took my plate, <clears throat> which I thought it was kind of strange because we have a term where it's called laid short, meaning that if there's so many members in the station and so many guys would eat, say, three pieces of chicken a piece, and all of a sudden you didn't get enough meat. Well, what they'll do, they'll make your plate for you so everyone has a certain amount, a certain portion right. to deal with. Well, when I went to, my, to, to the stove, I uncovered it, got back to this uh, table, uncovered my plate, and it was spaghetti. And so I thought it was kind of strange that they would make my plate for spaghetti, but I didn't think nothing about it. I just started eating. And as I started eating the spaghetti, all the guys were laughing in their paperwork they said that they weren't laughing. You're eating right in front of them. Right Same in front table. of them. Right, right in front of them, just as we're sitting here, yeah. you and I, today. And uh, I ate the first tea, uh, t fork full, and I said, you know, oh, man, this, this is bad. But I said <laughs> some other words. Yeah, yeah. And I started putting some seasoning on it, and guys <laughs> are laughing all over the place. And yeah. then as I ate, took the second bite, I hear guys using profanity, O, S, O, F, you know, and now I knew something was in my food. And um, I stood up, asked, did you guys put something in my food? No one said anything. Guys, a couple of guys started leaving out the door, and I got loud about, did you guys put something in my food? Nothing, no one said anything. And then one, the, the same guy that told me where my plate was came over to me and said, uh, don't eat no more. And I said, what's in my food? Wouldn't tell me. So I knew at that time it was best to get out of the kitchen. And maybe that was a good time that they didn't tell me who was involved in putting the dog food in my plate or telling me that it was dog food that I ate. So I went upstairs. They all, the members came upstairs, and they... Um, what did you do with the food? I just pushed it away. Okay. Pushed it away. The members came upstairs and said, hey, uh, we want to tell you what's in your food. And I said, well, what was it? Because I didn't know what was in the food. And they said, man, we fed you dog food. And I was shocked. At that time, I felt like, honestly, beating everyone down in that room. Mm -hmm. But I knew that it, if I do that, then I would perjure my own self. Right. So I left it alone and told them, you know, I forgive you, but I, don't forget, I won't forget this. I said, what you guys did to me was wrong. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a guy with 17 years on who's never been disciplined, who's worked all over the city. Every place, every evaluation that I've had is excellent. But I'm this bad guy now because I call the city on this, this thing, investigate this. I'm uh, very glad you came on this show. Hey, thank you. I appreciate now, it. Now, you know, I can understand, you know, the harassment yeah. that you got, yeah. you know, during trying to do your job. Mm -hmm. 17 years, you wanted to be a fireman to begin with. You enjoyed your career. Yeah. How does it feel now that you don't get that? You know, get, don't get to do that. I, I feel that I was I was cut short. Yeah. You know, people talk about money. It's, it's it wasn't about a money issue because firemen make a decent living. It was about that the department didn't come through and give me the help that I needed. Well, thank God you have Jenny here to make sure that oh, yeah. just checking things to do it. I want to thank you very much. Hey, for I, being I appreciate on the show. I appreciate I really coming appreciate in. That. I appreciate it. And uh, let us know uh, what you're doing in the future. Okay. Okay. Sure. okay. Right. okay. Thank you. Hi, I want to thank you for joining us on the Insider Exclusive. You can get more information at www.insiderexclusive.tv. I'm Steve Murphy. Thank you.